Hello and welcome everybody, Josh the RV Nerd, Bish's RV here with the newest member of the Salem and Wildwood family, the new ICE series, or subdivision actually, of the Salem Cruise Light and Wildwood x Light uh, group. So um, this is very confusing right now, which is why I wanted to put this footage together, because there are actually four different Salem and Wildwood stick and tin campers out there. You have full Salem Wildwood, you have the step down Salem Cruise Light x Light, you have these ICE members, and uh, then you have the FSX division, which is actually its own kind of separate subset of the subset of families. Clear as mud, right? That's why I wanted to put this footage together. So if you run into one of these in the wild, if you're shopping, you know what you're getting and what's not included. Because if you watch other Salem Wildwood videos, they may not exactly reflect what we're looking at here. So what this is, like several other members of the family, it is a price focused, intelligently contented uh, offering. And I actually think that's what ICE is supposed to stand for. It's like intelligent camping experience. But I wanna see in the comment section, how many other things can we put in, uh, can we fill the acronym ICE? I wanna see a lot of different options and the crazier, the better. Overall, when I first heard about this, I rolled my eyes so hard. Cause like really another price point sensitive stick and tin camper. And then I went through it and I don't, I don't hate it. It doesn't suck. It actually brings some really nice eye appeal and eye candy. Now there are some interesting decisions where some things weren't done, but typically on this one, something else was done in its place. Like in the kitchen, you've got that just monster viewing window off the campsite of the RV, which is really nice. And a lot of RVs just flat don't offer that, especially in the world of super slide bunkhouse campers but it, it came at the expense of all the overhead cabinetry. The cool thing is there's hidden cabinetry behind the pantry. So you're going to find a lot of interesting exchanges here, but overall, I don't hate this one. It's not bad. I, I could kind of see myself and my family camping in it, but we're gonna go through, show you what's good about it, what's not good about it, and um, you know do our best to be candid and straight with you. And if you appreciate that, hit that subscribe button. Let's get going. And I think this is really one of those cases where this RV's greatest assets are also its greatest liabilities. The exact same things that make one person really gravitate toward it, I think are probably going to be the exact same things that make other people move away from it. Um, it, uh, you know, it brings us some good campsite window coverage, but that comes at the cost of overhead kitchen cabinet storage. Now, they worked really hard to be uh, a little bit creative and to come up with some other solutions to kind of overcome that. Like we're going to see that nice pantry tainment center in a few minutes here. But that jelly ain't necessarily everyone's jam. Now you'll see that um, it is carpetless. It is a ventless floor. It is also a step up slide. And that is a symptom of the fact this rides on a smaller, lighter chassis. And the wheel wells actually stick up above the floor level. So the slide cannot be floor flush in one of these. The good news is if you like this layout, but what you're looking for is something a little bit more floor flush, the industry is certainly swimming in opportunities for things. I never turned the lights on in the slide. Okay, well, never mind that. Uh, moving on here. Why did I, how did I miss? Oh, because these lights are justified over closer to the slide. Enough light was hitting the seating. I didn't really notice it. I was about to say, boy, it sure is dark up there inside the slide box, but that's my fault, not theirs. Okay, when you start getting into budget sensitive stuff, Sometimes you'll start running into non-ducted air conditioning, which I, uh, in a model like this, I, I don't agree with. And thankfully, they did not do that here. Now, it's it's also kind of interesting. Like most of your Salem and uh, Wildwood stick and tin campers, it does not come with a factory TV. I'm, I'm a little bit uh, surprised, kind of pleasantly so, that it still includes that electric space heater along with the propane furnace and... They didn't shrink down the fridge. It's still one of the little bit bigger 10 cubic foot 12-volt um, compressor fridges. Now, um, for cooking, you do have an outside gas grill hookup. Uh, you do have a propane stovetop under that glass cover. By the way, the glass it's not a glass cooktop. The, the glass cover is basically a countertop extension or um, just, uh, I don't know, general eyeball look cover or backsplash grease shield. Um, every single year, I see people on... Oh, I'm going to sneeze. <clears throat> <clears throat> Pardon me. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> that's So that's Mr. Langston, whose face popped in the window there. Uh, he's uh, with Forest Rivers Media Group, and I think he's here just to make sure I don't need anything today. But... Um, believe it or not, it is not necessarily my first time recording something, but I do appreciate 
uh, the fact that if I need something, they have a person right here to help out. Sorry, what was I, <clears throat> before I had some technical snifficulties, um, oh, cooking. So it's a propane stovetop. Don't cook on the glass, fold the glass out of the way. But it's not a propane oven. It's an uh, electric convection oven. So kind of keep that in mind uh, down there. And you don't see drawers overtly. I'll get everything open. There's actually, what, two normal silverware drawers and then two extra long drawers uh, right over there in the kitchen. Plus, behind the entertainment center is a lot of storage space. So back it up a little bit here. The uh, the indirect accent light above the slide also uh, seems to be tricking me this morning. I'm also not yet caffeinated. The brain isn't exactly firing. Um, you know, I just I, I just missed it. Anyway, um, window coverage. Take a look at that. So a lot of RVs, especially bunkhouses, have the big um, poop side windows. This one though gives us that oversized campsite view window to give you a little more of a camping experience and some cross breeze airflow. Again, it came at the cost of cabinetry, but it depends on which one you like a little bit more. Why did all these lights just turn off? What is going on? Is this thing haunted? Okay, so that finger slide dimmer switch that I touched over there, that's the only way that you turn all the main cabin lights on and off. Uh something had to have come within basically touch level proximity of it to turn the lights on off. So evidently we're being joined by uh, Casper the Friendly Ghost today playing a little bit of a ghostly prank. I mean, maybe he's the one that turned the slide lights off. I forgot to turn it back on again. I was all spooked about the ghostly thing. Anyway, doesn't matter. I, uh, squirrel, sorry. Uh, the Versa Lounge. They're maintaining the Versa Lounge here in the Ice sub-series. If you're not familiar with it, um, obviously you've got like an extra long sofa kind of thing going on here, but you've got kind of just like a little table desk arrangement behind it. What the, the magic of it is that cushion right there can flip to the other side. And I'll demonstrate this in a few minutes. If you want to convert this over to a, uh, a traditional two bench dinette and jackknife sofa, you can absolutely do that. And there's plenty of storage down there. Um, personally, I really like these radius walls. I think it just adds... Uh, a little bit of shape and character to a space that is otherwise just so boxy and vanilla and bland. And it's funny how one little thing, it's just one radius corner. It's not even a lot. It just really makes me go, oh, something, you know, I, I don't know. It doesn't have to be much. I also respect this right here. You've got the, uh, you know, depending on which way you're looking at it. So if you're off to the side, these things look like um, rhino beetle uh, coat racks. You know what I mean? But check this out. If you're staring straight at one of these, tell me it doesn't kind of look like the Cobra logo from G.I. Joe. By the way, for those who are uninitiated, Cobra from G.I. Joe was just uh, uh, like if you ordered uh, a Hydra from Marvel off a of Wish. It, Cobra was flat inspired by Hydra from the Marvel comics. Doesn't matter. Anyway, I'm a nerd. Um, take, <laughs> take a look over here. It doesn't have any sort of cargo bunk function because there's things like that. You see where that boxy wall partition is? Um, that is where, uh, your water heater is located and they really didn't have a better place to locate the water heater on this one. So we don't have a cargo bunk function. This being a more budget sensitive camper probably wouldn't have received one. Um, anyway, one of the things that I do like back here, if you notice, they gave us individual separate private bunk curtains and little details like that I think are really smart content because <clears throat> sometimes if there's only one curtain the kids want to fight whether they want the curtains open or closed one thing I'll tell you also the uh the the bottom bunks tend not to get quite the same airflow as the top bunks although I'm looking at this design right here and I hope you appreciate the fact that I'm going out of my way to point stuff like this out the, uh, the air conditioning vent back here is actually not above the bunk. It's kind of just in the rear section of the RV. So one thing to consider, if it is really, really hot and you're camping, um, you're probably going to want to leave these curtains open for the kids. Otherwise, they're going to, you know, they're going to just warm themselves up in there. Now, it is a pretty thin curtain, so some cold air will still get through. Actually, I tell you what, rather than me telling you my theories, actual owners who have used RVs like this, what have you found in terms of air conditioning, top bunk, bottom bunk, in a, in a layout similar to this? Leave me a note, let me know. In the move, uh, meantime, in the move time, we're going to meet, yeah, oh my gosh, I need to go get caffeinated. In the meantime, <clears throat> we're going to move on, nailed it, first try. So this is a split bath. 
Um, some people like these, some people don't. You don't usually see them as often in um, RVs that have a, uh, a, a slide out. You tend to see them more in no slide campers. Um, the, the benefit here is if someone's using the toilet, if someone's using the shower, someone else could wash their hands or brush their teeth, get ready for bed, whatever. The downside is um, you, you, you may have to, you know, use your bathroom hands to open and close that sliding partition bathroom privacy door right there uh, before you wash your hands. Now, some people prefer the bathroom fully enclosed. Some people don't. Everyone's a little different. Um, I kind of like this design. I'm okay with it myself. I will say, though, like if we take a look at this, uh, it is tight around that toilet. It is very tight around that toilet. And uh, lefties, frankly, you're going to get along a lot better than righties will on this one. Just make sure you're uh, grabbing the butt napkins and not accidentally rubbing your backside with the shower curtain. Uh, I had to ask one of my people the other day, I said, hey, do you know the difference between toilet paper and a shower curtain? They said no. And I said, so you're the one that was using them, huh? Which is a fun little setup and joke you can take home with you. Anyway, now the RV is six and a half foot tall. Uh, which means my head being a little over six foot tall myself, my head's definitely up in that skylight. Uh, another thing, it is just a mirror on the wall. It's not a full-on medicine cabinet. And there's not a lot in the way of countertop space. So you may want to, well, I don't I don't really know how you're going to contend with that, but just, I guess, be aware of that so you can plan accordingly. And that's the kind of stuff that if you've never camped before, you probably never would have considered little details like that. But again, I like to try to, to give you a little bit more of a, a real-world perspective and uh, to, a view on things how you may actually use the RV and how that may affect you. Now, again, we've got the full-on Versa Lounge over here, but as I said, one of the cool things, if you take a look at that bench that's currently facing toward the bedroom right now, you see how that backside can flip around. Um, it can be uh, a, a number of different things, effectively, arranged different ways. There's also a lot of storage going on below that thing. Although, like, they went with the, uh, the cloth-style totes on this one, I, I think that they definitely probably could have um, stuck with the plastic totes, but my guess is they cost a little more. So on the ice uh, subset, we're probably getting the cloth varieties. And I think that under that sofa section, they probably could have stuffed two or three more. But again, my guess is for price sensitivity, they didn't want to do that. I do appreciate that they did use the longer totes, though, because that does make it easier to get to the back of the, uh, like, the dinette storage. Now, behind the pantry, obvi or, well, behind the TV is obviously where the pantry is located. And some people, I think, are, are reasonably going to ask, is there going to be a problem, uh, you know, with the that electric fireplace? Is it going to just cause a bunch of heat to build up in that pantry? Something uh, to really understand is those electric space heating fireplaces, they push air forward, not back. So the hot air they create is pumped into the living cavity of the RV, not back into the pantry area of the RV um, so no, there really isn't a whole lot of concern with that pantry space building up a ton of heat and like melting your marshmallows and chocolate bars for s'more time or something like that. Cause the hot air that it creates goes out the front, not the back. Um, I, I don't know that that's well understood with everyone cause you think fireplace, you just, in your head, you think heat radiating and emanating in all directions, but that's not what they are. It's a forced air directional heating system. Uh, moving forward here. Uh, the kitchen, let me, I'm sorry, I said moving forward and then I'm going to back up. Because we don't have overhead cabinetry, they have just this handy little shelf I guess you can use. I, I certainly wouldn't travel down the road with stuff like breakable bowls up there or anything like that. But it can be a nice little visual statement piece or a place to organize things when you get to your destination. Actually, something that would be really handy now that I think about it, because this is basically just a chunk of countertop, is if there was like a rod that hang, hung down under this, hanged, ugh, uh, and you could like hang stuff off of the hanging rod, as it were, I think that could be cool. But it also means that we do not have a stovetop exhaust vent hood. So what you have up here in the living area is one of the um, uh, smaller varieties of a Max Air fan to help uh, exhaust the cooking smells and heat and all that goodness. Plus, of course, you do have the big window overlooking the stovetop. Um, you know what? I'm sorry. I got to back up one more time. I keep seeing things that I want to talk about. When you see a window right behind a stovetop, I think a lot of people very <clears throat> fairly would say, yeah, that thing's going to be a grease bomb. I Okay, I can see that. I totally can. The good news is the screen portion of the window that opens is on the right. The, the portion of the window directly behind the stovetop, that's just glass. 
So yeah, it could be a, a you know a bacon shield. But um, the Casper the flipping ghost, what is going on in this thing? I don't I don't know. Um, I'm I'm getting kind of freaked out. As a matter of fact, it, it doesn't matter anyway. Moving up here into the uh, the bedroom space, we do have a sliding partition wall here, and the RV industry loves to come up with names for beds. This is what they call the Custom King. It is basically an Olympic queen. It is 66 inches wide. It is 78 inches long. An Olympic queen is 66 by 80. Um, so if you wanted to, you more than likely could replace this with uh, a, a normal Olympic queen or just a true queen bed. That's up to you. But obviously, it's got the VersaTilt function. So if you go replacing it with a really heavy-duty, thicker mattress, you'll still be able to walk around it. But the Versa tilt function, the incliner headboard function, that is really kind of engineered with the factory mattress in mind, meaning a backbreaker death wafer. And um, you don't want to be lying on it while it's moving up and down. You want to actually get off the bed if you're going to raise and lower that. So just to help you uh, avoid burning that out or anything. In case you're curious, you do have some TV hookups uh, up here in the corner that I suspect very few people will ever use. But if they weren't there, I think a lot of people would freak out. Something I haven't demonstrated so far is the entire RV still maintains the blackout roller shades, which a lot of times, some more price-sensitive trailers, you tend not to have those things. Now, you don't have to use the whole tilt function, but if you do, it creates like a yoga mat size space in here because Americans will use anything except for the metric system. Um, <laughs> and uh, it actually gives you room to get dressed in the bedroom. However, speaking of that, you have kind of thin um, side closets as a result of the, uh, uh, what do I want to say there? Oh, the, the wider bed. So they gave us behind the entertainment center actually a chunk of extra bedroom storage. If you notice up there, you also have uh, some uh, like serious, pretty decent closet, closet space. Now there is storage below the bed and the bed does easy lift. But to access those things, you do need the VersaTilt bed down. So here's my two cents and my feeling with this being the, um, the ICE Intelligent Camping uh, Edition or Essentials or whatever they, uh, ICE stands for. I can't remember offhand because, again, not caffeinated. But um, I don't know that in this segment I need a fancy size bed. And I don't know that I need the VersaTilt function. Personally, I think I'd be okay with just the bed that's fixed and down all the time. And I do love the fact that they included the gas struts on this because so many RVs. When you get into anything with any level of price sensitivity, you lose little functions like that. By the way, did you notice both sides of the bed have USB plugs? But when the bed's down, both sides of the bed also have these handy little um, kind of CPAP pockets is what they call them. But just headboard power pockets is what I call them. They actually put power outlets in the side wardrobe closets of these models right here. Uh, it is a, a a very very easy thing to mix. All right, mix. God bless it. Miss. Okay. Enough of my stupidity. Now that time the lights were my fault because I literally just backed into the switch. The other two times I don't know what's going on. Regardless, I want to close the slide and give you a look at this sucker in road mode. Although, with all the direct lights off, with just kind of the kitchen indirect lighting and the slide out indirect lighting. Uh, lighting, we get a nice little kind of what I call stealth mode camping experience right here. Handy for movie night if you add a TV. Yeah, that is pretty much what I expected. Now with the lights off, it's a little bit dark in here. But with the uh, the lights on, I don't know that we're going to see a whole lot more because again, the lights are justified over the slide roof. So regardless. Now, um, in terms of what we can road mode access, this is not an awesome traveling model now that I look at it, because the dinette comes right up next to the kitchen, so you're going to have to dukes a hazard butt scoot boogie yeehaw to get over that sucker to get to the fridge. The bedroom is just a flat no-go. Now, it kind of looks like maybe you could slip through there. You can't. It's too small. It's way too small. A toddler would have trouble slipping through there. Not to mention, you see where the slide floor actually comes out. But if I, uh, let me see if I can slip my butt out the door to make this viewing angle a little bit easier to cut. One thing that it does really well for transit is bathroom access. So if you're going down the road and you pass the last rest stop for 199 miles and you hear those dreaded words, mom, dad, I got a potty. Fact is, in a quick little IBS emergency, you can get yourself in here. Now, I also noticed another new thing here. Um, They 
have moved away from using a Schwintech slide on these. Um, it is a Power Gear above floor slide system. And if that name sounds slightly familiar, that's the same kind of slide system I see used in a lot of motorhomes. It exists above the floor of the RV and it goes in and out, um, but tends to be something that can handle more use and, and uh, you know, stress and whatnot. Now, in the world of motorized RVs, that same slide system is often used in conjunction with slides that can be occupied while the slide is retracted. I don't know if they've tested for that here. In, in fact, I think the best thing you can do is assume you still should not occupy the slide while it's retracted. But this may be a symptom of the RV industry moving to something that would kind of allow us to use towable RVs in a very different way. So keep an eye on that moving forward. Now, when it comes to towing and going, um, I, I think that there's a lot of qualities on this that will generally lend itself toward the realm of half-ton towability. It is uh, between 32 and 33 feet long, tip to tail, tongue to bumper. So that is starting to, to push the length where a lot of people are going, I don't know that I want much more than that. That feels like enough right there. Um, but the, uh, the weight category comes in fully max loaded under 8,000 pounds. So that fits within the realm of a lot of half tons. Um, I, uh, I, you know, I think it's really going to depend on your personal comfort levels and where you're taking it in terms of what vehicle will uh, kind of match up most appropriately. The good news is that our folks at our stores are equipped to help assist you with that. Um, now, uh, over here on the slide, the uh, the windows are tinted, which is nice. That's something that Salem and Wildwood hadn't always done in the past. Uh, but I always want to find a better way to, to mash the words Salem and Wildwood up. But they, there's, I, I have a hard time. Like they don't really overlap anywhere. If someone has a, a fun little nerdism we can create for those, uh, let me know. Because like Salem wood, eh, I don't know. It just doesn't, it, it doesn't slap the way I want it to. Now it does have a full pass through compartment, but a lot of members of this family do the same thing here, where it is nice that it has a magnet holdback. Um, and it is a nice wide door, but it's not quite as tall as the other side. But it's not the worst I've seen either. There are still quite a few brands that give us absolutely no uh, access to the pass-through off the other side. Now, in terms of the physical build and body of this thing, um, you might notice it still says cruise light on the front. Or if it was a Wildwood with the orange decals, it would say X light. For those who are uninitiated, Salem and Wildwood are quite literally the same thing. Don't let someone try to tell you that one is better or different than the other. Where they differ is when you start getting into the different subsets of the family. So this is like... Cruise Light Junior, for the for lack of a better way to say it here. Uh, for instance, you know, it's the same uh, 3 8 uh, OSB roof deck, walk-on roof, 16-inch on center, uh, you know, roof trusses, uh, wall studs, 12-inch on center floor joist, 5 8 tongue groove plywood floor decking. The underbelly is still enclosed, though it is not forced air heated. Um, and then you see little things like this, you know, they, in the ICE series here, or sub-series, as it were. They don't go to a full-on camp kitchen, but you know, more and more, I'm kind of, I, I'm kind of becoming a fan of what they did here. The outside fridge is really handy, and camp kitchens used to be really, really awesome. And a lot of RV manufacturers have just nickel and dined them to death to the point that they kind of suck anymore. Um, this one gives us an outside fridge that I think most people could enjoy. It gives us an outside gas grill hookup in case you want to actually bring a nice thing like a Blackstone but it doesn't go beyond that, you know? So the cost effect is minimal, but the, the function effect is still pretty one-to-one uh, -one maximum. Good power awning on this too. I'm gonna give them credit for that. A lot of times when you start getting into these budget offerings, the awning space absolutely sucks on it. Yeah, this is not terrible. Um, it still maintains that 60,000 BTU uh, on-demand water heater, which is the same that you get in like a lot of big fifth wheels and with the way that this one plays out and lays out, it's a single-headed sewer monster. So all of our hookups are basically all on the backside. Oh, no, it's not. I missed that initially. Hold up. I am so sorry. We've got our uh, bathroom black and gray in the back corner. And then in front of those tires, we have the kitchen gray outlet. I, uh, I missed that my first time around. I thought it was all cross plumbed together. So there you go. Um, I wanted to make sure we clarify that real quick. Again, the roof is fully walkable. They don't do anything in the way of solar on these. You can see though that it does have that, um, that uh, bracket off the side to add a roof access ladder. And if you're wondering, why didn't they put it off the back? Well, 
If you think of what's on the back of the RV, you've got the bathroom in this corner with that skylight and you don't want to step off the, the ladder into the skylight. And then uh, over here, let's see, we got the, uh, the bunk windows and everything. The bunk window would have conflicted most likely with where that uh, ladder bracket would be located. So they moved it off to the side, but I don't know. I don't hate it right there. I don't think that's the worst thing in the world. Let's get up here. Where is this? I missed this initially. Okay, so the kitchen outlet is without question right under the slide out. So one thing that you can do here, and I don't love this, but um, if you have some sort of Y splitter or something like that, uh, if you have on-site sewer, one of the things that you can do is leave that gray hooked up and leave the valve blade pulled open so that the gray tank dumps out. Now, I don't like that because theoretically, you still could have particulate buildup causing gunk and, and all kinds of potential problems in that tank. But um, a lot of people I know leave their gray tanks open all the time with on-site sewer and do so without problem. So that may be more of a theoretical problem than a practical one. Something I would like to see RV manufacturers look at at some point is also including a gray tank flush along with the black tank flushes that are a little more common. What do you think about that? So what do you think, everybody? Are uh, you ready to say ice, ice, baby, or is it too cold, too cold? I keep it up, someone's going to uh, rock the mic like a vandal and wax this chump like a candle. <laughs> we are busting out the vanilla ice references today. There you go. Um, when you're ready, we're ready. I'll leave you some links in the description for a couple other similar size featured bunkhouse trailers. And, uh, you know, we'd love to hear from you what you think about the new thing here. We're definitely going to have it at a couple of our stores. We'll see um, if it's uh, something that has any kind of long-term staying power. Now, I guess that really depends up to you folks. So uh, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.